y'all it's your favorite dj how do you fly the bitch they all love or hate what's up y'all welcome to another episode of how do you fly with your podcast boo we in this bitch hey Thank you, baby. Welcome, Miss Filoso. Hello to my boo, purple kitten. Hey. I'm in a dubstep type of mood today. I'm just like, I'm feeling new wave. I'm feeling dubstep. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling real, real alternative in this motherfucker. Okay. As y'all know, I am an international African American woman. I love every race, every shade. You are right with me. <laughs> hey. Let's send a prayer out to all the victims in Italy. Italy is the newest um, outbreak of coronavirus. You guys, is going crazy. They don't even know how to deal with it in Italy. So let's pray for Italy. Let's pray for China. Let's pray for America. Let's pray for Africa. And allegedly, they say that the coronavirus cannot survive in Africa. So we might all soon be migrating our motherfucking asses to Africa. Okay? Just keeping you guys abreast of what's going on. Okay? Yeah. 
Yes. So let's get started, you guys. So you already see what we're going to be talking about today. Today, you guys, we're going to be talking about the Gabrielle Union. Gabrielle Union. Is she is she a Wade yet? Is she did she ever turn into Gabrielle Wade? Or is she just Gabrielle Union? Did she decide she's just gonna keep her name? Because I'm not sure, y'all. Y'all gotta let me know because I don't know. So we are going to be talking about Gabrielle Union, her husband Dwayne Wade, and their decision to turn their to let their um daughter Zion. Um, have a um, alleged sex change into Zaya. They are now calling her Zaya and she used to be Zion. And I'm so proud of myself because I am getting my, my pronouns correct. I have been paying attention and I want to make sure that I do not um, offend anyone when I'm talking about a topic this sensitive. <clears throat> okay, guys. Hey everybody, hey K got a body. So you guys, let's get right into it. So first of all, we are gonna start off with Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade and their decision to, to let their 12 year old son Zion go ahead and transition into Zaya, their 10 year old daughter. For those of you who did not know. So uh, behind us, we have a picture of little Zaya we have Gabrielle Union and we have Dwayne Wade. Okay, you guys. Now, a lot of people are feeling like, you know, this is this is not this is a cultural thing. Some people are offended because in our culture, in African American culture, you don't see this very often. I don't know if this has happened. So we have to say we haven't seen this very often. A lot of people feel like this is against, you know, like their religious beliefs. Um, but then a lot of people have to also understand that maybe uh Gabrielle Union and Dway Way don't have the same religious beliefs. Um so basically let me give you guys my opinion. In my opinion, I feel like that little Zaya is too young to determine if she could get a, a full on transition sex change. Okay. That's in my opinion. If this was my child, I would talk to my child and I would wait till my child got at least at the least 17 years old before making such an abrupt decision. It's the, I don't even remember being 12 or 13. Like, I feel like the little Zaya might wake up one day and be like, why did my parents let me make this decision? Like, I just feel like that I've seen a lot of uh, YouTube videos where people transitioned and then they wanted to retransition. You see what I'm saying? Another thing I feel like is that this should not be a decision that Gabrielle Union gets to make because this is not even her real son. You know, I do feel like it's a bit of a disgrace and a, a bit of a slap in the face to the real mother. Now, you guys know the real mother is. Um, this is Brownie. Look, you see his paws. The real mother to Zaya. Um, Y'all know that um, Dwayne Wade and the real mom, they was going back and forth. Dwayne Wade ended up getting full custody of the kids. The kids could only go see the real mom with, um, that she had to have um, surveillance. It had to be somebody there. She only got a few hours. When the kids stayed overnight, he kept the kids so busy on such a busy schedule that she said she didn't get to uh, spend the kind of time she wanted to spend with her kids. To the point where if you guys go on YouTube, you will see Dwayne Wade's baby mother on the side of the sidewalk holding up a sign talking about how Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union that took her kids from her. I'm going to tell you, I don't know the ins and outs and the outs of the ends of it all, but I just know that I come from a family, um, you know, a very broken family. My mother uh, abused drugs and even with all that, it doesn't negate the fact that I, I love my mother. Like, I love my mother. No matter what she done done to me, it's my choice. If I want to be in my mother's life, no one can, you know, I just feel like that that bond that you have with your real mama, regardless of what y'all go through, at least in my case, I love the shit out of my mom. It's a lot of things I don't like. I'm disappointed. But to have the courts rip you from your real mama. Now, these kids were really young when this happened as well. So they didn't really have 
a, a big say in the matter. And if they did, were they old enough to even be having a say? I just think it's a bit disgraceful. I just think that it was just like ripping somebody's heart out of him as a woman, as a mother, um, to, to know that you carried a child in your uterus, you know, nine, nine months and two weeks. Okay. You know, you don't breastfed this child. This your baby. I don't give a damn what kind of condition you is. I don't think the government laws, no one have the right to take someone's child from them to the extent to the way these babies was taken from their mother. And this is in my opinion. And also in my opinion, I feel like that little Zaya has never even, for lack of better words, busted a proper nut using the sexual organs that he have now. I mean, has he even begun to masturbate? Do he know what it feels like? I think that as a male gender, you know, you know, having a, the penis, you should at least know what it work, how it feel like, what, what, how it works. Like uh, T.S. Madison once said that she wants to keep her penis. She likes having her penis. And who's like, if you've never felt what it feels like, how do you know you don't want it? Then you can play devil's advocate and then you can say, well, looking at his father, you know, he's going to be well endowed. So why not get rid of the penis or castrate, mutilate or transition while the baby is still young and it doesn't grow as big? Either way, it's, it's, it's very uh, disturbing to me. Now, this is another thing I wanted to say. Now, you guys know that... Um, you know, the world is, we're living in the world, so we don't look at it as if we are giants and, and we don't look at little people as being little miracles. A lot of people abuse and attack the handicap. Y'all, we don't really look at it like back in the days, people used to think like, even in India, people think that handicapped kids, kids with extra fingers and toes and stuff are very special and, and it's a spiritual thing to it. Well, anyways, I just want to say that, you know, in the modern day times, NBA players like this, you know, um, who have son, they, sons, they tend to inherit, even when they have daughters, they tend to inherit their unique and amazing build, okay? The um, NBA players are like the modern day superheroes. They are like our modern day superheroes. They are like giants. And everybody knows the more melanated that you are, the more strength that you have. Your features are bigger and bolder. Even your hair changed. The melanin in your body is darker. Your, even your brain can sometimes be considered smarter. If you're faster, quicker, stronger, of course, your brain is smarter as well. So I just want to put that out there that little Zaya could grow up to have these huge features of the superhero features that her father displays. So I feel like, are they going to give the baby um, drugs? Like Nikki Tutorials, another thing happened. We're going to talk about her later. When Nikki Tutorials just came out that she used to be a man, that she's um, a trans woman. Well, Nikki Tutorial is very tall. She is uh, um, she's one of our Caucasian sisters from the beauty community. And, um, and I think what she did was foul, but I'm going to talk about that in another live. But... Um, and Nikki Tutorial, her mother put her on growth hormones so that she wouldn't get any taller because she's like six foot three or something, allegedly six, two, six, three. She's just a big white woman. She's a big old woman. OK, so I feel like Lil Zaya is going to be really tall as well. And I wonder, are they going to put her on medications that stops her growth? Um, also. I wanted to talk about the fact that Gabrielle Union has always been vocal about the fact. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the cheating. Okay, now all of this comes into play with, with the decisions they are letting this little baby make. First of all, Dwayne Wade admitted to cheating on Gabrielle Union so much. Okay, Gabrielle Union has had allegedly over 10 miscarriages because she wanted this man's baby so bad. This lady felt like that the man was cheating on her because she couldn't have kids. Do y'all remember Gabrielle Union even played in that movie with Muddy Waters where she played his wife and the wife couldn't have kids and he kept cheating on her, bringing home stray kids and shit. Well, anyway, it's like um, life imitates art in a way. Well, Gabrielle Union has been cheated on 
a lot by Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wayne has brought in inside outside kids. Now, allegedly, this last outside kid made Dwayne Wade decide, you know what? I done cheated. I done brought another outside kid and he felt bad. So he allegedly told Gabrielle Union, you could just take my masculinity. You could take everything. I, I, I'm sorry. You know, he just he just felt so low that he offered up his masculinity to her. OK, now I'm the type of woman that believes that no matter what you do, how much wrong you do, only God is your judge. At the very end of the day, don't ever give a woman or a man so much power over you that if you make a mistake, even if you have outside kids, nobody deserves to take your femininity or your masculinity to prove to them that you are so sorry and you love them so much and you so hurt. See, I feel like that. Gabrielle Union, if you want to stay with a man that's doing all that to you, that's on you. It's not up to you to play God and, and, and say, well, you know, even if that man is telling you, take my masculinity, take it all from me. I was wrong. I can't bear to look at you no more, baby. It's up to you to say, no, you stay the man that you are. Only God can judge you and I'm going to stay with you and I'm going to forgive you because I want to be with you. You don't be like, okay, strip yourself of everything. Like she really done, in my opinion, she really has taken on this westernized way of thinking. Okay. That's just the way I feel. Now, also Gabrielle Union has admitted to being jealous of whites women and their ability to get, you know, top of the line, black African-American men, like NBA players, entertainers, you know, all that, you know, um, allegedly she has always been, well, I don't even want to say allegedly because she's been very vocal about it, but I'm going to say allegedly anyway. Everybody knows that Gabrielle Union has a has an issue with Caucasian women and athletes. It, it ain't just them by themselves, but it's the fact that the athletes chooses outside their race all the time. She's been very vocal about this. So I feel like in a lot of ways, Gabrielle Union would do whatever she can to make sure Dwayne Wade don't end up with a Caucasian woman, a Chinese woman, a Mexican woman. That's just the way I feel, in my opinion, after paying attention to Gabrielle Union in the way she thinks and the way she swings. Now, you guys also got to remember, this is a woman who has been hurt in her life. She's never been protected by her own family. She's been molested several times in her life. And she is an actress. This could all be a, a, a show that she's acting out. You see what I'm saying? She's an actress. You know, she's bringing acting into the real world. Boo boo. This is a real baby. This is a real life. God, God is not good. You are not allowed to take this man's son and this man's, uh, this man's masculinity and this man's daughter's masculinity. It's not up to you to do that. If anybody going to make those decisions that need to be between Dwayne and the mother, Gabrielle need to step back. Because I think she has a lot of alternative motives that fits her keeping Dwayne Wade. Because that's all she wants is to keep this man and keep him away from bitches like Kim Kardashian. Okay? It just is what it is. Okay? Now, moving right along. I also want you guys to understand that mutilation, castration, uh, trance, um, the removal of the um, genitals is nothing new and that it is something that has been going on for a very long time. And it, it isn't just um, slavery. It isn't just a, um, a slavery thing. Okay. So I wanted to bring this to you guys' attention. So in 1599, the eunuchs are the Catholic choir boys. If you, have, you guys can see that. In 1599, the Catholic choir boys, the boys that wanted to sing in the Catholic choirs. Now, keep in mind, the Catholic church has always been known for sleeping with the underage boys, um, just a lot of perversion, a lot of um, male on male uh, sex, sexual experiences. And then in the Catholic church, they like to preach a lot of times that they are celibate and different things like that. But I'm assuming maybe they, they are saying that they are celibate when it comes to women. They don't sleep to women, sleep with women, but they definitely sleep with men. And they definitely have um, um, a stain 
on them from their past where they would sleep with the young boys and castrate them. And I'm just saying, I'm just keeping it real with y'all. I wanted to bring a little knowledge to y'all. A lot of y'all think that it was something that just happened in the slavery days to demasculatize uh, the African-American slave, or it was something to, you know, uh, keep the uh, African-Americans from sleeping with the Caucasian women, or it was something, you know, that, you know, that was just strictly put up on slaves. You know, some people tend to tend to correlate this with a slave thing. Now, this is something that was practiced in 1599. The Unix choir boys, um, for them to sing in this particular choir, they had to have their genitals removed. This is one of the tools that they used to remove the genitals of males, okay? And they were removed, the importance of removing the genitals of a male when they are young, the importance of doing it when they are young, because what it does is it stops the pitch in their voices, okay? And when they did this, it made their voices uniquely high pitched, almost even higher than most women, okay? But the side effects of this castrating the young boys, it would make their limbs grow longer. Their arms would get longer, their legs would get longer, even their rib cages would grow longer. But it, it, but it was, it was such a unique style of voice that the uh, Catholic choir wanted that it was worth it. I assume in 50, 1599, it was worth it. Well, anyway, they stopped this practice in 1878. But I wanted to show you guys the, the one of the tools that they used back in the day to castrate young boys. And also I wanted to tell you guys about um, the world of castration. I want you guys to check that out if you can. Just do your research. It's really intriguing. And I also want you guys to know this is also a practice that is practiced in India as well as it's big in Turkey. In Turkey, it's very big for them to take trans women and celebrate them. Trans women are celebrated a lot in Turkey. A lot of the rich, uh, well-to-do men, they hire trans women to uh, do, do um, exotic dances for them, to do all these special things for them, but they want them to have their male parts. Like in Turkey, they want them to have their male parts. And it, but in some places they also castrate, but they are big on the trans woman with the male parts in Turkey. In India, they also have a thing that they practice is, is um, all about castrating of the male genitals. So uh, uh, it's also known as mutilation of the genitalia. Um, so I just wanted you guys to know that it is nothing new. It is something that has been going on for years now. And um, in this situation with Dwayne Wade's son, I'm not saying that um, they're doing this for the choir or they're do or they're doing this to demasculatize him. I'm not taken away from the fact that Zaya feels like a little girl versus a little boy. But I do feel like that they should wait before um, taking off the baby's genitals, at least 17 years old, okay? I think the baby need to have a wet dream at least. I mean, let the baby, jack off jack just suck come on now how do you know you don't want your organ if you don't even know what that that mother could do i'm gonna tell y'all the first time that i really knew what this but jj did i was like what this is what it do i was shocked i had no idea what this thing do when this thing busts okay I was well in my 20s, early 20s, when I busted my first, when I, heard, when I had my first flower bloom, when I experienced my first flower bomb. Okay, bitch, I ain't stopped. I just was just like, <laughs> any chance I got to go in my room and lock my door, baby, I was trying to get it because I could not believe it. You know, I accidentally found it. I accidentally found that spot that makes it all go boom. I was like, what? Didn't no, pe didn't no penis do that for me. I'm gonna tell you now, I found my spot by myself, okay? It was all by myself. 
<laughs> Congratulations, Beverly. Beverly said, I am just, I am just need a few more months. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you was talking about you were transitioning. Sorry, boo. Yes, you guys. You guys give a big old shout out to Purple Kitten, my moderator. Purple Kitten um, has been riding with me. She always gives me encouraging words. She's like, you know what, Heidi, I got your back if you need me. And, um, and I just really appreciate her. She knows how I feel. And um, lately, you know, I just try not to get too close to people. And I'm just like, when you find someone genuine, you know, it's very special and it means a lot to me. So it is what it is. But, you know, as soon as you you start telling people you cut for them and shit, here come other people trying to throw shit in the game that, you know, people like to see, you know, things in disarray. People don't like to see, you know, love and unity, you know, but Purple Kitten is one of those people that is like, look, she's about positivity. She's about growth, you know, so it is what it is. And that's what I'm about. So moving right along, you guys, we are going to talk about this situation with Tasha K and uh, Jason Lee. Big wide body ass. Big wide body ass. Yes. We're going to get off into this topic. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let's pull us uh, some body work up here. Okay. Can the dog get some body work? Oh, child, not her, honey. Not her. Honey, not the Kool-Aid girl, honey. So I'm just going to pull this picture back up just for a second. Because um, I already uh, got Tasha K and Jason Lee on here. So there's no need to uh, yeah, pull up anything else. Because we already got uh, Jason Lee and Tasha K up here. So anyways, basically, recently, Jason Lee went on his platform and... You know, he was talking shit about Tasha K or whatever. And it is what it is. We all know that Tasha K is a controversial uh, content creator here on the YouTube streets, hunty. And we get our life from her. From, uh, from Me, most of the time, from time to time, I don't agree with what Tasha K have to say. But most of the time, I get into it, okay? I get my life. I'm here to get my fucking life. And that's what I want. I want to get my life. I do believe that kids are off limits. Let's get that out the way. But um, it is what it is. Child, this stream yard is no harm. I can't see on stream yard. Everything is the opposite way. I'm going to take my shit. Ooh, honey, everything was yellow. Now everything is normal again. <laughs> Shout out to those flights. Get your flights out where, okay? Get your flights out where. I only have a limited supply. I'm about to bring back a new collection that's going to be fire. And them holes going to sell out. I'm telling you, these are almost gone. Let me tell you, I got probably 25 pair left. I'm going to do a special. I'm going to do a special on these big face flights. Give me one second. Let me see who's at the office door. Yes, y'all. So I'm going. I'm going to do a sale on these big face flights just to get the rest of them out there. We got a few yellow, we got a few pink, purple, and black left. About 25 pair left. That's it. This was a collection that I've been doing for a couple of years now. So um, I am ready to bring a new, fresh, fire ass collection. Cause y'all know how Heidi Fly what you do it. I do it one collection at a time baby we like to sell out and then keep on going when we get that big old million dollar sponsor though then we could bring forth more than one collection at a time but until then support the dog 
okay? Now, all sponsors, anybody want to sponsor me? Cash App Heidi Fly. Go get you a lip kit. Get into it. Shop Fly Uchi. Uh, if you want to sponsor my mukbangs, you know, you can cash out and tell me what you would like for me to eat. That would be a lot of fun. So anyways, you guys, yes, we are going to bring back a new fire fucking collection. It's going to be so motherfucking hard. Y'all know how I like to do limited edition, limited edition. I'm going to do 50 fire cold ass pair. We might do a hundred. We might do a hundred. We might do a hundred of some fire ass shit. That's just what it is. Okay. And now moving right along. Oh yes. Yeah. So I'm going to do a special on the website and I'm just going to, um, do like, um, we're going to do 50% off. We're going to do 20% off. Cause I think they already on sale. I don't even think I have them on the big website yet. They're going to be at flywoochie.com. We are going to do a 30% off. We just going to let them all go. We're going to let them all go for the low to make room for the new collection, baby. And they're going to be popping. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so moving right along. Yeah, so Jason Lee was talking shit about Tasha K. Now, we know Jason Lee is also a controversial uh, commentator as well. He does his vlogs. We know that he is affiliated with... Um, Floyd Mayweather, and which enabled him to get the show Hollywood Unlocked. He's also been featured on Love and Hip Hop, where he threw a drink in Hazel Lee face. People tend to think that he's a colorist and he just comes after dark skinned women. But I think he comes after any woman that comes, you know, comes strong. Any woman with a strong opinion, he's going to try to come for her and, and bring her down a couple of notches. Because, you know what I'm saying? You know, she want to be the, the bitchiest bitch in the fucking room. Okay. These are my opinions and I'm going to stick to them. Okay. Well, recently, Jason Lee went too motherfucking far and called Tasha K's baby a gremlin. Okay. Now, I ain't even got to say allegedly because the shit done already played out. Okay. So, Jason Lee goes on his platform and, and after the backlash, after all the motherfucking backlash that he has been receiving, he goes on his platform and says that, Oh, he was just doing that and just saying that to bait Tasha K in because of the things that Tasha K has said about other people. Now, my thing is, if Tasha K done already said that about other people and they had a problem with it, then they done already had their kerfuffle. They done already went back and forth. Nobody needed Jason Lee, blueberry Kool-Aid man ass to come in and step in and try to do some mediation. It was none of your business. Nobody asked you. Stay in your lane. Do you see what I'm saying? But see, what the people want to know is why Jason Lee not talking about what happened when Melissa Ford had that car accident and he was not there for her. We want to know why was it so easy for him to move forward? We want to know the tea. We want all the tea, Jason, since you got the tea. Give us the tea that we want to know. We want to know what had happened. That's what we want to know. Now, meanwhile, Tasha K um, seems very unbothered and don't give a fuck. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, Nick at Night covered this whole thing on her show. Now, I love me some Nick at Night. Nick at Night is like the girl next door, the little real, real pretty black girl next door who, you know, on the cheerleader squad, and you think that you could run over her and she cuts you the fuck out, okay? She remind me of, you know, boys in the hood, but she knee along, okay? She knee along over there, you know, the little good girl over there, but she will click up and cuss your motherfucking ass out. And she sticks by what she say. And that's what I like about her. So anyway, um, she was talking about this on her show and I clicked the link. She had a link and I clicked the link. Well, Tasha K also clicked the link and Tasha K gave a little bit of commentary on how she felt about what Jason Lee said, but it really didn't go there. She really didn't give her opinion much because Neek was uh, saying how Tasha K, when she roasts people, that she do go below the belt. That's what Neek was saying. So Tasha K called, uh, hit the link to defend herself and say that, you know, uh, that Neek is, you know, basically savage too. She said, you be you be talking shit too. But Nick and Knight was like, nah, but I don't be going under the belt. Low, low, low. How low can you go? You know, like Tasha K did. So I did appreciate Neek standing there and letting Tasha go. Nah, bitch, now nah, I might talk shit, but I don't talk shit like you. It's only one Tasha K, okay? And we love her for being Tasha K. We don't need two, okay? Now, anyway, 
let's let's listen to a little bit of what Tasha K had to say. But I don't know if she really addressed Jason Lee that much. I'm not really sure. Now, Tasha, you know you be going way down here. Nick, you listen, I'm supposed, look, I'm supposed to be at the bar, but my damn husband took a nap during my live stream, so we got to wait till he get up. Okay. okay, so that's why I'm at home. Hold on, and I look like shit. Give me a second. You do look like shit, Tasha K. You had to close my raggedy ass guest room door. Oh, Nick, Tasha, same shit. You were tearing out them R. Kelly pants. Tasha, you gonna way below the belt. Nick, everybody. First of all, I'm from the south, okay, and we just said it for what it is. I know that West Coast people. Speak a little bit more proper so it comes out easy. But being from the South, okay, we just say the shit for what it is. With the wine, the wine coolers and beers. <laughs> Y'all blockers. Cock blockers. You know you want to go there, but because you want to go there, you're trying to remain a Christian. You going to be Christian. quiet. Christian. 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 You know, Tasha K has said some questionable things about kids. I do feel like kids are off limits, but at the same time, um, I feel like that um, Jason Lee is full of shit. Now, when I clicked the link, I went on there to say how I felt about, um, I guess the question at Nick and Knight is, is Tasha K problematic? Because Jason Lee made a video called Tasha K is problematic. So we are going to listen to a little bit of what I had to say, and then I'm going to elaborate on what I meant just a little bit. Now, Nick, if you don't want me to play this, you let me know and I will cut it out. But I'm just going to do where I come in and I'm not going to put anything else on there. Yeah, y'all, I went on Nick and I because I loved it. I love this topic and I wanted to, I had my own questions because I'm not letting them get out the fact that. Nobody ain't addressed the Melissa Ford situation. Okay. What is it? Heidi, Heidi, I don't even know how to say it. Just Heidi Fly Lucci is just fine. <laughs> Hold on, let me change my head, my um, this. Give me one second. Okay. Okay, Nick, I just wanted to say that Tasha K is no more problematic than anyone else who does commentary. What you got to understand is Jason Lee and a lot of un other reality star stars or, you know, D-list, Z-list, whatever you want to call them. Um, a lot of these uh, reality stars have been watch watching Tasha K. They're trying to get her juice. Tasha K does have a certain amount of juice. And what I meant by that, we're going to break this down. Tasha K has a certain je ne sais quoi. When I say juice, I mean she has a certain way of delivering shit. And these reality stars have been watching her for years, whether they want to admit it or not. And they take little bits and pieces of what, you know, believe me, they all probably liked her at one point until she said something that they didn't like. And then they wanted to forget that all the things that made them like her. She does have that juice, that je ne sais quoi, that make you click on and say, damn, I got to watch Tasha K. I got to see what Tasha K going to say today. Okay. Moving right along. You know what I'm saying? The way she talks, the way she delivers that roast, that gag, and that slay. Now, it might not be the best, you know, maybe, you know, you might want to say when she talk about a kid or if she go in on Cardi too much or whatever the case may be. But it is still what attracts the people to her. Jason Lee wants to be Tasha K. Why is he clout chasing after Tasha K? Right. 
So he says that Tasha K is irrelevant. So if Tasha K is so motherfucking irrelevant, why did you do a whole series where you use high quality video? Y'all did editing and every motherfucking thing. Because you want some of that juice. You want some of that cloud. You ain't getting enough juice from Hollywood on Lagwabu. You're not getting enough juice from that. So you got to call Tasha K's baby a gremlin so that you could get her attention, so that you could comfort her for all the things that she said about other people's kids. Jason Lee, shut the fuck up. Moving right along. Just say you wanted to call her baby a gremlin and just say that you motherfucking clout chasing because that's what you're doing, sweetie. If she ain't all that and she's so irrelevant. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These men, and then I'm not trying to be funny, but in, in a lot of times, a lot of gay men, they tend to want to pick up the acronyms, the swag. Somebody the said that you're a whole mood in the chat. Thank you for the donation. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dr. DeCasa said Heidi is a whole mood. <laughs> Hold on, wait, let me just give Okay, me so what I meant right there is a, a lot of times in the um, gay community, you know, they act like, you know, black women. They act like black women that be talking shit. They act like your auntie. They act like your cool ass cousin. They talk like your mama. Look at Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star is the white man's bed buck. Baby, he run around here sleeping with Gucci and everybody else. He is the idea of what they want in a, in a gay man. Who really, if Jeffrey Star just gets some titties, he could be a um a trans woman because Jeffrey Star, I will say, is very beautiful to me with all the surgeries, the jaw surgery, the nose. You know, he done got a lot of surgery. He got his booty done. You know, Jeffrey Star looks like a girl to me, a pretty girl. But back in the day, Jeffrey Star wasn't that cute. But Jeffrey Star used to talk like Tasha K. He used to talk like a fly ass black woman. And then he got the nerve to be racist. Then he turned around and be racist. So a lot of the swag and the flyness that these gay men elude is from like Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry said uh, that his mud dear character is straight up from his auntie. Is it his cousin or his auntie? So, you know, we all grew up rolling our motherfucking necks and snapping our motherfucking fingers. And we're like, girl, bitch, where? You know, that that is just. Uh, it's a cultural African American woman thing. It really is. Y'all, y'all be trying to take our props and shit, but it just is what it is. It don't matter who I'm with or what I'm doing. I'm always an African American woman. I always had a certain swag. When when my son leaves something, what's the first thing your mama tell you when you don't clean up after yourself? I'm not your slave. You better wipe that up. Like that is not something that you just. That is something you grow up hearing. A lot of us, we repeat, we say the shit that we say because this is what our grandmother said, our mother said, our auntie said, and now we saying the shit, okay? We might add our own little swag on it, but you are your culture. That's why I tell you to embrace it. And, and a lot of times people try to like run from their culture or, but regardless of whether you, you want to be a part of your culture or not, the person that's looking at you is still going to, look at you as that type of person regardless or if you're like oh but i'm like this oh but i'm like that but bitch your culture is african-american i'm talking about african-americans at this point right now but anyway let's move right along because y'all she was having a couple of problems and everything and then I, I i got my i didn't get to say everything i wanted to say so i wanted to make sure that i got off in there and let y'all know exactly what i was meaning One second, hold on, wait. Okay. Hold on, wait, let me, just give me one second, hold on, wait. I did that interview on Queen, hold on. Hold on, wait, let me, just give me one second, hold on, wait. Okay, it sounds, it sounds fucked up in my headphones, but it sounds clear for y'all. Okay, go ahead. Right. Uh, the flyness of Tasha K. That's what attracted me to watching Tasha K. The only thing I feel about with Tasha K, what she messed up at is, she should have did that interview on Queen Radio. I just feel like, in my opinion, I don't give a damn. I don't need a coin if Nicki Minaj is going to put me on Queen Radio. Um, mm -hmm. So right there, I want to talk about, um, I've been very vocal about the fact that I feel like that 
I do not know why Tasha K didn't go on Queen Radio, but we do know that she was invited by Nikki. Allegedly on the Instagram streets, they saying that it was about a coin. They was trying to do business and, and Nikki didn't want to pay Tasha. I don't know that to be true. I have not heard Tasha K say that, but I feel like if it was about a coin, that was one time Tasha K should have said, fuck that coin, because it, Tasha K would have made so many coins just from that interview, flipping it, breaking it down, reposting it, other people talking about it. All of us would have talked about it. Bitch, we would still be talking about that interview. We got Mona Simone, Mona Machiavelli, who that interview Grammy Award winning Cardi B on our sector, on our sector. And Tasha K didn't even take that interview with Nicki Minaj. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You got to know when fuck a coin. You're going to get that coin on the back end. Now, anyways, moving right along. So, mm -hmm. Tasha K recently apologized to Cardi B. I felt like that was kind of like, uh, I felt like it was unnecessary. I feel like that she should remain unapologetic. That right. So, right there, I felt like that, you know, after Tasha K didn't take the Queen radio deal or, or the deal wasn't done, they ended up not doing it. Somewhere they were saying allegedly Tasha K was a little salty about that, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, but Tasha K decided that she was going to apologize to Cardi B because she, you know, of the drama with culture. I think it was about talking about the baby, saying, it, you know, because she got a disease that the baby this and that, you know, y'all know Tasha K was going to fuck in on Cardi B. And, and I just felt like that. Why are you apologizing now? It was kind of like unnecessary. And it just kind of like diminished her brand a little bit to me. Like after she apologized, like I ain't, <sighs> bitch, I hadn't clicked back on yet. You know, no, I, I do click on, I do watch Tasha K, but it just, after she apologized to Cardi B, it just wasn't on my radar. But anyway, if she apologized just for the kids' sake, then that's a different story. But I do click over there to Tasha K from time to time, but not like I used to. I ain't gonna lie. I used to watch Tasha K way more than I do now. But, um, so yeah, I thought it was um, unnecessary for her to apologize. You done already done the damage. You done dogged this girl out. You done went back and forth with Cardi B for so motherfucking long. To, you don't went through Star Marie. You don't pour that out kind of tea and juice. I mean, from the from the girl being in the in the back of the cab talking about her pussy stank to just all kind of shit from the kid. You just don't roll. You don't molly walked Cardi B, and then you don't came back and apologized. I'm just like, girl, that was just girl. Just be unapologetic at this point because, honey, you raw and uncut. You know that's your brand. Don't run the people off by acting like something that you're not because the people are there because of what you are, raw and uncut. It is what it is, baby. That's what you are, hunty. And Nick and Knight did not let her forget. <laughs> That's her brand. It's a lot of us, including me. We feel like that we can be now. Now, you know, the community guidelines have changed. We do have to chill out a little bit more. But Tasha K is the reason why a lot of us wanted to do commentary because we can talk shit. Right. And I stand by that. The reason why I wanted to start doing commentary is because I was watching Tasha K and she was talking shit. And I'm because, you know, and then, you know, like a year ago, people. Uh, Shit, three years ago, nobody cared how raw your mouth was. Like the community guidelines have changed and stuff now. Now we have to chill out and be more censored. But we still know how to talk shit. But Tasha K is the reason why I wanted to do commentary. And that's just the truth. I loved it, honey. And I done been in trouble for my mouth. Because that's how I talk in real life. I like to talk shit. I like to hear shit talking. And, you know, that shit talking can get you in trouble. As we have seen, because the community guidelines have changed. You see what I'm But you know, Tasha still talks shit. She still give you enough uh, shit talking that you be still, you know, you still get your life. You get your life. I mean, I don't get my life the way I used to get my life, but I get my life. But another thing, um, Tasha K, if you're going to come on somebody's live stream, you already know it's going to be your face. All you got to do is click that motherfucking thing that says, um, 
All you got to do is click stop cam and a bubble will pop up and you could talk. Because if you ain't you ain't put together, sis, since you weren't put together to be popping up on a live stream and y'all get all these views and shit and you just look the damn mess. I just wanted to take my motherfucking, where my flat irons at? Let me tell you what I wanted to do to Tasha Cat. Let me tell you what I wanted to do to Tasha Cat. All right. Okay. This, this is all I wanted to do to Tasha K. Now, y'all know I done had this forever. I got several. I just wanted to take her her and just flat on this shit. But see, she got short hair, so I just wanted to go in and just spike her up. Just spike her. Tasha K, I would do your hair for free. I am a licensed cosmetologist. I am retired, bitch. I can slay some fucking hair extensions braids and spikes honey i will bitch every day for free but you got to say how he did it look i will spike you up bitch i cut hair i'm a barber i cut my kid hair i cut my husband's hair bitch I, i'm an international cosmetologist i can do all hair textures okay Bitch, you ain't got to come on that live stream looking like that when you can call heidi flauchi and bitch i will show up and I will show out and I will leave your house in one piece, bitch. Okay. But you ain't got to do it. I will beat your face for free. As long as I can put flauchi on your lips for free. Let her know. Let Tasha know that I will come over there and bring all my tools and I will do that shit for free. I ain't lying. Just tell them how the flauchi did it. But anyway, moving right along. Saying. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I just wanted to say that and I just wanted to say why Jason's so worried about Tasha K. Why come he not talking about when Melissa Ford had that car accident and the lady felt completely alone? She uh, injured her brain. She didn't even know if she was going to come back from that. She said that was some of her loneliest times. Jason Lee was nowhere to be found. You see what I'm saying? But then, of course, but then, of course, he want to tell Tasha K where the T's at, where the T's at. Now, nah, but we want to know where the T is at. We want to know how much money did Floyd Mayweather pay uh, Melissa Ford to forgive your big funky ass. That's what we want to know. We want to know how much did it take for her to come back on Hollywood Unlocked. Give us the T, Jason. We want the T. That big motherfucker would dog a woman out so he can climb on her back. He will climb all over a woman back trying to outdo her, trying to outshine her. It don't matter what race, culture, shade of skin, Jason Lee will come to do a woman in. And that's just the way I feel about it. I don't have no respect for him. I don't have no respect for a man like that. Something like, uh, I was just setting her up, face ass. How you just setting her up? And you did a whole show. Tasha K is problematic. No, motherfucker, you're problematic. You threw that drink in hazily face and you thought we was going to forget. Now, nah, bitch, we didn't forget. We didn't forget. We watching your big wide body blueberry ass. We watching you. Anyways, you guys, that's all I got for y'all. <laughs> Remember, no matter what you do, take Christ with you and you will make it out. And holla at your girl. I'll be sure to rock your planet. i see you again. i see you guys again. With Hollywood meets the YouTube Street News. And later on, you guys, I am coming back on. I got a surprise for you guys. And I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to make you wait. When I get back, I'm going to take a little break. My husband is home early today, which is great. I'm rocking my pink Flauchi Bunny gray tea. I love this tea. I like to wear the little ones, but today I wanted to wear the big one and then just relax. But today I have a special surprise for you guys. I am going to be doing the first three chapters of Meth Monster by Timothy Blaine, you guys. So when I come back, we are going to be reading the first three chapters of Meth Monster. You guys remember, get your lip kits and um, I want to show you all the new labels. These are the new labels. I didn't get to show y'all last time. These are our new Flauchi labels that you would find inside of your t-shirts, you know, your, your jogging suits, whatever you purchase. This is what you will see craftily sewn inside.
your clothes. Okay. But I thought it was so cute and so universal. I thought it was good for uh, girls and guys. You know, it's so nice. And you know, I love that red color with the white pop on it. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sisava. Yes, she did, Sisava. She used to watch uh, Tasha K every day. So you guys, I will see you guys in, I guess, an hour or so. And we're just going to be doing the first three chapters of Meth Monster by Timothy Blaine. And let me let you guys know, there is only... So we are going to breeze right through it. It is only nine chapters, you guys. So being that it's only nine chapters, we are going to get through this book in probably two days. Really, I could read this book in a day. It's a very easy read. Uh, the letters are nice, big and fat and chunky. The chapters are, are long enough, but not too long. They're nice and fun and short. So you guys, we are going to be reading Meth Monster when I return. Okay, you guys, have a great rest of the day. And I will see you guys later. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Purple Kitty, for everything. Hit that like button, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, okay? Espresso brown, all the figures of melanin reveal the royalty that's within. Sophisticated, sexy, strong, beautiful, got it going on. Let's clap and get my life when I take my ride with Heidi Klein.